Hello and welcome to our brewing classes. I'm Tim Wendelbo and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make delicious coffee. Now, making tasty coffee is really simple and it takes just as long time as to make really bad tasty coffee. All you need are some simple guidelines and I'll show you them right now. First of all you need a delicious ingredients. You cannot make great coffee without having good ingredients. So make sure you buy a coffee that's coming from a single estate or a cooperative. Those are normally the best tasting ones. You don't want to buy a coffee that just says Colombia, because Colombia is a huge country and has many many different farmers. Also look for the roast date on the bag and not the expiration date, because the coffee is only fresh for about 4 weeks after it's roasted. So look for the roast date. The coffee also needs to be packed in a sealed bag, because oxygen oxidizes the fats in the coffee that makes it taste rancid. So that's why you need fresh coffee and a sealed bag. Now, sourcing coffee can be quite difficult, so make sure it's ethically sourced so that the farmer is also paid a good price for it, because you cannot grow good coffee without getting a good pay. So ask your barista where you buy the coffee if they have good fresh tasting coffee that is ethically sourced. The next thing you need to invest in is a good coffee grinder. A lot of people use these hand grinders, but they can be quite annoying after a while because it takes a long time to grind coffee. So I use this when I'm traveling. What I really recommend is to use an electric grinder, but make sure it has adjustable grind settings. Normally, if your coffee tastes really bitter, you've been grinding too fine. And if your coffee tastes thin and watery, you've been grinding too coarse. So you have to be able to adjust the grind setting. A scale is really helpful to make good coffee as well, because then you can measure exact how many grams you use, and you can do it over and over again. A good scale, you can also measure your water so you don't really have to measure the water before you boil it, you can measure it as you brew on the scale. Using a timer when you brew can be quite practical, just so that you know how long it took. Because long brewing times can tend to over extract the coffee and short brewing times can tend to under extract the coffee, making the coffee taste sour and weak. Remember you have a timer on your cell phone, so you can use that one. Another thing that's important is to clean your equipment. It doesn't really matter whether it's a French press or a, a filter or an AeroPress, as long as the equipment is clean and that you brew according to the method. So you need to grind differently for each method and just learn how to use them. The last thing you need to think about is to have great water. In Norway, the water is great from the tap, but if you live in, for instance, Denmark or in London, the water is full of calcium and you can see inside your water bottle if it's very chalky inside you have a lot of calcium in the water and this makes the coffee taste really chalky and bitter and earthy and if you like this kind of fruity and bright aromas you need to then use filtered water reverse osmosis or just buy bottled water with low mineral content that's all you need to make great tasting coffee and in the next videos i'll show you how to use the specific methods